back again. Show us your tips. Weekend preview time. We've got Eagle Farm in Flemington to look at. I believe that's what you're doing. That's what you did, is it, Beaver? Uh, apparently I did, my friend. Good. So we're Good. all ready and raring to go. Beautiful. I had a I, – I, what about that Randwick program? 11 races and that's impossible. Oh, it's horrendous. I, I, just, I had three – I'd look at it and said, no, that'll do me. I'll stick with what we're doing. I started having a look and I went through, it's got to get better. It's got to get better. No. It's got to get, it's getting, it got worse. There's 250 got horses race. and 220 can win. It's like, <laughs> hey, which is good for the punters. It's, it's, it's not good for me pretty... leading a tipping comp, but. No, but it's hard to find. There's too no. much work to be done. Going up um, and down to one spot up in front there, but it's a different story. Yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, they might win with, yeah. Uh, uh, not a lot of form to go by in some of those cases. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go anyway. But uh, lucky we're not uh, down and dirty in the Randwick Cup. No. Uh, at some point we'll get back there once we get to the early spring. So a month or so we'll be back to Sydney. But for now we'll stick to the meetings. We've actually got a preview, which the first of which is Eagle Farm, Oaks Day, rail 2.5 metres, weather good. I think it's currently soft, but it should be a good track. Thought it played pretty well last week. Uh, the, yeah. the problem is the backup. We'll see, but I can't can't knock the track at all. I thought they'd be outside, but I think it was all pretty fair. I think outside gates still in play here. But interested to yeah. see what you've I, come up with. I'm not. I'm not as. I'm not as convinced as you are that it was that fair. I think you it had to be outside, more in the though. front half yeah. of the field. I think if you got too far out of your ground, it was going to be always hard to make up. Yeah. too much ground. Um, and certainly they seem to come down the middle of the track. Yeah, but it wasn't um, outside fence yet. No, but it wasn't outside fence yet. So, yeah, yeah and you're right, it's probably going to play fairly similar um, as it has. We kick off with an 1,810-metre benchmark 90. Uh, and how are you going to start the day here? Yeah, interesting way to start the day here, but I'm going to go for the princess, number seven. Um, Rahayanis. Uh, I thought uh, two runs in this prep have been pretty good. Um, first up, uh, ran third in a, a listed race behind Philosophy, uh, which was pretty good form, and that was that was a nice run to start off, and then back that up. Um, not far off, I'm in the group three at Doombin, uh, a couple of weeks ago behind Maracana. I think it now gets to peak fitness. I think this is uh, an easier race than what it's been racing in. And Gate 5 looks good. J-Mac aboard. Uh, got it on top. I do too. It, it, and she's never been one of mine. So to come up with her uh, maybe says something. Look, as you said, finishing on the heels of Thalassophile and um, the other half-decent race, I think dropping to this grade looks pretty well. I think a drier track will set up well for her as well. Third up with J-Mac going on who... Spoilers, I think I'm tipping to win about eight races tomorrow. Uh, it, yeah, she's right in this. If she doesn't win this, I don't know where she wins again. Age of sales are danger. First up, second prep in Oz will run well. Take up a spot. Trials are fine. And if you're looking in exotics here, old mate Wapiti is going around again in Evocator. Not a lot of luck last time. Both around the 20s might be ones for you. Trifectors and such. The second is a 1,200-metre class six. Uh, we've lost a few already. Uh, and once I got down this, I, I narrowed this down to two hopes. First is Mullane, who's not going badly at all, coming out of that Sunshine Coast race there behind Wits End. I think back to dry definitely suits. Outside gate, as we said, um, probably not a bad thing. And yet James McDonald goes on. Back to its favourite ground as well, um, Eagle Farm, where it's uh, 6 2 2 2 uh, from Pizarro, who get, has had a new lease on life up there of Tony Golan. Both starts were good. Pretty much one from nowhere last time out. Inside gate, we'll get a bit of a feel by and then. I think they're the two hopes that I'm happy to play with. Look, there's always an excuse for lost in transit. Maybe the dry and being on pace makes it the best rough year here for me. What have you found? Yeah, really open race this one. Uh, plenty of chances and uh, you've made good cases for for both the goal and horses, Pizarro, you're right, has found a new lease of life and going good and uh, snuck home both last couple of starts. I'm going for a resume here in Hatchet. Yeah. Um, just a little bit left field. Has really good first up form. Um, won a couple and placed a couple from its five attempts. Um, loves the soft going. 
um, does its best work in this, these types of conditions, um, goes all right at the track um, and the distance and can run a really good race first up, has a powerful finish this horse. Um, so if there's a bit of speed on and gets the right run, uh, could be a smoky around the double figure odds. Beautiful. Gets uh, the services of Vlad Jurik, who once this carnival's over, I think you can follow him up in Queensland weekly because he's a world-class jockey and he's setting up home there now. So um, we've seen him and Michael Rod make their way up there. I think once we get out of proper carnival time, both worth following. Uh, the third is a 1,500-metre, what are we doing here? 1,500 metres for the two-year-olds, actually. Over da, 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 where I had, I came up with the race in market order. I, I don't have too many tricks here. Amelius was very impressive last time out. Goes up there, finds the right race. Maybe a bit short. Um, nothing here I want to really stamp as a bet. Even what I thought would be a nice roughy, Duke Calzini coming off Goulburn. Um, the market's found at third pick, I think. So, yeah, I can't really find anything too crazy to talk about apart from his favourite. It's going to be hard to beat. And as I said, Duke Calzini... Imperialist, both chances, as the market said. What have you come up with? Yep, I think you're right. I think the favourite here, Amelius, is the horse to beat um, on the improve on the way up. And, uh, yep, maybe a little bit skinny, but I think it's got uh, the edge on this company given the exposed form. I, mean, I did have the main danger as Imperialist. I think that's it, it shows the one uh, potentially for me with the most upside. Uh, now getting out um, to 1,500 and shown enough in its few starts against OK Company to suggest uh, could run a bold race here, but it's uh, favourite on top. Listed uh, Lightning Stakes is up next over 1,000 metres. Who do you like? Yeah, another really good race here. Uh, plenty of chances. You could pick 10 here and still get it wrong. Um, I'm going for another resumer here, shooting for gold, uh, the top weight. I think it's the class horse of this field, hence why it's the top weight. Um, again, I like it because it does fly well uh, fresh. Uh, first up, never been out of the placing in seven attempts. Um, so that's a really good uh, pointer for me. Um, handles the soft going. Uh, it's got J-Mac aboard and got the wide gate, but possibly come in a couple here. And again, um, just got... So maybe at the price, uh, good bet. I kept coming back to it as well. It and the stable mate, I think, are both live chances here. They're both eight. Well, one's eight, one's nine dollars on what I'm looking at here. Uh, stable mate being Shalar's moment that keeps going through the grades, but shooting for gold, all the reasons you've said, and the trial was nice as well. Uh, my concern is a lot of the pace are in the emergency. So if they all come out and Golden Boom gets a really soft lead, obviously hard to beat. Was very good sitting outside lead first up. But I agree. I think at the each way, shooting for gold, a, a great bet here. No, I think the emergency's probably going to start, although oh, Matuna, um, yeah, Matuna's, Matuna's been scratched and Navis too has been scratched. And Vodka Martini is in later as well. Race before. Race uh -huh. before, so she's been scratched, yeah. Okay, so she's she here. before second. Yeah, yeah. But that hasn't been scratched for me to get. Okay. Could go one way or the other because I think, yeah, it, Flaming Conquest, Vodka Martini and uh, Economics were a lot of the pace outside of that other leader. But anyway, the fifth is the Spear Chief Handicap, a listed race again. And uh, it's another horse here. If Yellow Brick doesn't win this, I, I don't know where it goes. Uh, drops in grade, posses up straight in the back of Namazu, gets James McDonald, who's now won five straight. And uh, yeah, it was close up on the back of some good horses. Last two races here. And even a bit of a drier track helps as well. I'm going to make a case for Kalino being the main danger. I think it getting back to the dry third up uh, will improve off what it's done. Uh, Wategos has to springboard off its last one, but I thought that was a pretty soft race at one there. What are you thinking? Same. I'm going the same way as you. Yellow Brick here for me. Um, gets the right draw now. Um, shouldn't be three wide um, like it has been. Um, in the two runs to date, um, as long as that hasn't taken too much out of it. Third up should be at its peak. Gate three is perfect. Um, yeah, this is D-Day. Absolutely. The quality kicks and off. And you're right. Yeah, go Kalino. I think Kalino, um, again, uh, gets uh, to peak fitness here and can run well. Quaddy kicks off with the Queensland Day Stakes over 1,200 metres. Hedged comes up short. Uh, have you gone that way or have you accepted that perhaps it's just a cat? Well, I 
and not accepting it at the two dollars, no. uh, you know, seven to no. four, seven to four ish price. I just went for looking for a little bit of value here. I come up with two, um, and you'll laugh at me, but I've gone for Genzano. Of course, um, you have. Hang on. Yeah, I thought I thought the twenties. Keep going. No, I don't have my alarm back yet. I thought the twenties was pretty good uh, for this uh, first up. I thought that was a. A fairly handy run uh, behind Tiger Shark. Got back, finished off quite nicely. Uh, had the gate, had the ten barrier. I think uh, here, Posse's up nicely here, and with extra fitness, can run well. So I, I did have it. Um, I thought Skirt, Skirt the Law started to show um, a bit more of its form, and I thought it finished off quite nicely in the same race. Um, so I think it can run well again, and. Um, Keen to see how Moravia goes. Uh, that mm. wasn't bad first up and second up here could run well. Sadly, you know who I'm going to tip. So I don't know if I need to talk about this, but I'm going to give Inhibitions one more chance. Let up last time yeah. out. I think with with cover, J-Mac, et cetera, et cetera, I'll put it on top again. The horse I came back to, the horse I kept going back to you that I'm much interested in is a striker. I thought both runs have been solid in Sydney, sitting outside lead a couple of times. Now third up, Blake Shin can push forward here. Uh, just camped behind the likes of Tiger Shark. And we saw Jewelry come out of that race last week and brain them in Melbourne. So double figures and stables absolutely flying now. It is genuinely flying. It had three or four winners in Queensland on Wednesday. So 11 bucks will make a striker a bet uh, from inhibitions as well, uh, as said. And I do agree with your chances. The seventh is the Mayor's Classic Wait for Age... Uh, group, no, not even groups, just a $500,000 wait for age May, uh, race here. Uh, my best on the card is La Creek. It uh, would be a complete moral if it, if any rain does come, but it might still be. Uh, these are all sort of B-grade mares, B-plus grade mare, and this is just above that, I think, an A-grade mare. Last time it was at a mile wait for age, it beat Aegon, and uh, it's never missed a place. Second up, gets a great run. On top, the rest of these, yeah, take your pick for dangers. Uh is always promise a little less enthusiastic up front can improve at 17 bucks there. What are you thinking? Same, same, all day. Uh, you're right. I think it is the best bet on the car. Uh, La, La Creek, um, yep, should be winning. Lovely. This money's going to come for it. It'll start evens. Yeah, yeah, this this is a proper, proper mare. Uh, the eighth is the Queensland Oaks, 2,200 metres. Uh, and you can have your first crack at this one. Yeah, look, um, what can I say? I can't go past Scarlet Oak. Yeah. Uh, had it the last two starts. Uh, I don't think the 2200 poses a problem. Gate 15 uh, may be a little bit tricky, but might come in a couple. Um, as long as J-Mac can posse it up okay, I think we'll... Um, and it doesn't have that too hard a run. Won't matter as long as in the running line. It'll look like winning somewhere in the straight uh, in the 200. So got it on top. Um, I think Molly Bloom can obviously run well. I think third up now here in Australia. I think that that you couldn't rule it out. And I uh, I love the way that uh, Mayor of Mount Bull is going. I think it's uh, I think it's a genuine hope to be honest. Um, the other one of the other wild horses. Um, so that's the way I, I see it. Yeah, I, I, I'm i not knocking any of the favourites. If you like the favourite, especially Scarlet Oak, cool, go for it. I only missed Moonlight Magic by eight lengths, getting a $30 winner last week. Uh, so uh, quick backup, I think back to Mayor's grade will run well again. 15s, I'm going to put it on top again. He has had the 2,400 metre lead up. I'm going to have a peanut on Unique Ambition at a big price. Uh, because it's a John Sargent three-year-old, and the same with Kind Words, who didn't have a lot of luck last week. I think, I think sometimes we get – Oaks go one or two ways, and this will sound dumb. Either favourites really step up or a lot of them fall over and we get a, a blowout. So I'm going to play for the later, but I wouldn't – this isn't somewhere I'm going to plant my flag. I just think Scarlet Oak might piss in. Otherwise, we're looking at a at a, a value play, and that's the way I'll, I'll see the race. The ninth is the Morton Cup. Uh, group two, 1,200 metres, and I don't particularly like gate one here, but I've gone with insurrection on top. I thought the resumption under 60 kilos was pretty good. Drops in weight here. 
It was pegged back to the inside at uh, Scone there, and I think can improve. Flies second up, actually. Zach Lloyd, a bit of a new lease on life of late. At $9, it can go on top from Volana, who didn't get clear air last time out. Uh, now third up, gets J-Mac, who will be gunning for nine straight here and is the main danger. Who have you come up with? Yeah, good good race to finish the day. It is. Um, I thought both the ones that you have called out there were genuinely good chances. Um, I just went for a bit more value. I went for what you need. Yeah. Um, okay. At the double figure odds. Uh, three runs in this break. You know, obviously not the same horse it was prior to to this to the break, but I think it's building. Um, you know, it's uh, last start was in the Group One Goodwood. Um, it was only a couple of lengths behind Benedetto. This is this isn't as strong a race as the as the Goodwood being a Group One, and I thought that was pretty that was a pretty fair effort there. And prior to that, um, in in other Group races, were was only a sort of a long neck off some good horses as well. Um, we know it's got ability. Um, if it produced its best or was producing its best from last prep, it'd be favourite in this. So um, I'm, I'm going to spec it um, at the 12, probably get 15s. Um, I'm going to have it on top. Good shout. Um, and you, you mentioned building it. That was off a year off that. That was a proper, I don't know if it was an injury, but it was a long, long break. So, um, yeah. Perhaps a nice rehab prep and, and good call there. Uh, the other one that will improve back to dry is Arastro. I think it's been suited by the wet stuff we've had of late. Quaddy time from Eagle Farm, first leg. We'll go, I'm going to throw hedged in. Two, one hedge, two Moravia, four Astraka, six Inhibitions, seven Tiger Sharp Keeks winning. So I'll throw it in. Uh, Beaver fans can add Genzano if they like. Second leg, one La Creek, five Zoe's Promise, seven Fall for Cindy. Third leg, one Molly Bloom, four Scarlet Oak, five Moonlight Magic, nine Ahuriri, who comes through the Adelaide race Warmonger does, 14 Kind Words, 16 Unique Ambition, and we'll come home with two... Uh, no, I'm going to leave Marzu out and put your one in instead. So three Valana, six Zerastro, eight Insurrection, 10 What You Need, 14 Lek Vate. A hundred bucks gets you about twenty eight percent, just a shade off that. My best, same as Beavers, is the race seven number one La Creek. My value race six number four Astraka. What have you got for your plays here at Eagle Farm? Well, you know my best. You just told everyone. Yeah. Um, Sorry, so spoilers. That. No, that's all good. Um, love your work. And race nine number ten. What you need is my value. Awesome. Let's head to Flemington. Another. No, another headquarters program that has come up with full fields. This this has to have been one of the best winters for field sizes. Generally, you could plough through some of these winter meetings, struggle to find horses. This is – every meeting is just full. Uh, we kick off here. Rails goes at eight. Soft track, some drizzle around, but it's not supposed to be anything too scary. And I've treated as standard Flemington. We kick well, off – All I can say is, thank God it's not Caulfield because that track last week was a – yeah, oh, that's that's been a joke since autumn because they keep. I think they keep over water. I don't know what's going on there, but they keep over watering it. That inside it just goes to it. show you how good the wind jewelry was because nothing else could make a skerrick of ground. I will say, in half of those races, it's because the jockeys down there are incapable of going any faster than my walking speed. Yes, um, but I, to that point, I've found leaders through here because I think there's a lot of races that are going to be the same. Um, but anyway. We kick off with the 1,200 metres, and I'm going to tip the first leader on that note, which I think is going to be the blue colours. 1-1, uh, Damien Lane jumps on Pisces. I think it takes up control. It's got the pick of the track from gate five. Uh, they'll uh, walk. It'll waddle off and win. Jump lead, win. That's it for me. Yeah, I think you're probably right there. Um, it was really hard to sort of get... Uh, too much line up on the others. I thought if there was a danger, maybe the three Super Nemo mm -hmm. from the Moody Coleman stable um, could run well. I'm not great at lining up what those Packenham and Cranburn yeah. form means. But sometimes they just take them there for a kill, right? Uh, uh, and, um, and definitely Peter Moody does. But, yeah. Um, and so that's yeah. why I, I sometimes like just to chop out on some of these because you just don't know. Absolutely. The second, and we've got one coming up, actually, we'll get to. The second is a 400-meter benchmark, 78. Who do you like here? 
Yeah, I did narrow this down to two, um, More Mum, Number Nine, and Fancify, the four. I just went for the slightly better value in Fancify, third up. Um, thought it was a, a good run at Caulfield. Um, I'm just a bit worried that, again, it was leader and if that was leader bias. But um, I think it can run, a, I think the money came for it there and it, it did run really well. So I have got it on top, but super scared of more mum. That was um, a really good second behind a good quality horse last start um, at odds, coming off a nice win at Flemington. So runs well this track and uh, has some ability. So uh, probably save on one and back the other. I'm a bit shocked at seven dollars fancify. I've got it. On Me top too. Of it. That's why I agree. Yeah. I think it jumps, it walks, it leads, and probably wins again. I don't know what the other pace is, unless Bjorn's thing goes forward. Um, fairway start because uh, if it gets that with the claim as well, uh, it could be off and go. And uh, the other thing is obviously it's harder to do at Flemington, but uh, I've got fancify on top. I think danger's more mum. Not much to add. The third is the mile, uh, a three-year-old race here. And I went down this field um, making cases for Rise at Dawn, freshened up and the Shaper and this and that. And I got to Craig and I said, well, this thing's going to just fucking blow them away and stopped. And that was the race for me. Um, it, that was an impressive debut. I know, as I said, coming from some weaker stuff, but I think this might be a decent horse. Time was all right. Uh, it's on top from, as I said, freshened up, number one. Who have you come up with? I did the same, and I was quite surprised when I saw the price mm. around four dollars. I thought, "Oh, that's a nice little bet." Um, and it's still three eighty with Bakoda Chief out. Yeah, that's right. So um, I got a clear on top pick. I couldn't find too many dangers, to be honest. So uh, no brainer for me. Happy days. The fourth is a two thousand and five hundred and twenty metre race. Who do you like here? Yeah, I'm going to stick with the favourite here, Quantum Cat. Um, interesting, they've, they've taken it down to Flemington, looking for that extra distance. Um, 2,500 metre race. That was a good run last start. It was way out the back um, and made up really good ground along the inside um, in on a track that they didn't make up a lot of ground, um, largely. So I thought that was an excellent run. I think uh, the... the Interesting, it's gone down to, to Flemington, a couple of kilos less, got the right combination, Lane and Waller, and I think it's going to be super hard to beat. Absolutely. I think this is the kitchen sink job. Damien Lane goes on, found the right race. I think gate three doesn't they won't go as far back, second or third defence. If it gets there, I think it'll win. Berkshire Breeze, I've got as a danger because it could just walk again in another slow race and be very hard to get past. Uh, agree with you there. The fifth is a 2,000 metre three-year-old race. Interesting one. Uh, I, I'm I'm going with the Cornella from a, from a month ago in Steel Run and Aztec State. I'm forgiving Aztec State's last round where it was just a non-event, got right at the back in that race. That was almost two different races there. Uh, they've taken blinkers off, winkers on. Hopefully can settle up, which like it did a couple back, back to the scene of the crime where I think it won here last time it was at Flemington. I oh, know one at Caulfield actually, um, and still run. So I'm going to put it on top from Still Run, who's going well. Quinella that race with Aztec State, lovely trial since. Time for it. One at a at a price, and I, I'll probably end up backing is Acadian Empire. I know it's off Hawkesbury, but it's thirties, out in distance, lightly raced, and as I said, stable flying. Uh, let's find out if it's worthwhile as well. Who have you um, found here? I've gone for Aztec State as well. Um, I'm going to forgive last start and go off previous form where it started, favourite against Steel Run and beat it at Caulfield. Um, Didn't get a lot of luck last start. I think if it gets a clearer run, probably uh, might have finished closer. So I got it on top. um, And I had Lady in Pink as the main danger. Yeah, that's Uh, right. Good win last start um, at Sandown Hillside. Um, prior to that, ran a nice race behind a very good horse in Miss Aria. So carrying 59 and a half gets a three kilo claim here to 56. I think that brings it right into this race and would be the one I'd save on. Race six is a benchmark 100 over 2,000 metres. How about it, Beaver? Uh, Got to help me here, but uh, I'm going to settle with number 10, political debate. Um, God help you there. Yeah, I know. I had a feeling you tipped it too, but go on, go on. Did you? Yeah. I had no idea what I was going to 
back um, when I did the form here, and then I just kept looking, 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 and then I just went, oh, I'm going to go, going to take the Sydney form behind Golden Park, and then pretty good run, less than a length of Faulkner Park in the Wagga Cup. Um, so gets its chance here. This is an average affair. Um, do or die, so I'm going to go do. Let's roll the day. Dice gets Damien Lane. Pulled up with EIPH last time out. Uh, so many horses win off that. It's 20 to 1. I'll put it on top. From Midnight Blue, who will push forward, and Silence Rente, who will also push forward, but does seem very short. Um, yeah, let's roll the dice. 20s, it's a throw at the dartboard, but you don't often see Damien Lane on horses at that price either. The seventh is, yeah, I pretty good debate I looked at. I didn't like the fact it's got no pace up early. Didn't like the fact it, it just seems a pack chaser to me. But anyway, move on. Seventh is a good race, 1,100 metres for the three-year-olds. And there's a good horse here, I think. Uh, Carbonados jump outs this time in have been fantastic. Uh, first up, second prep in Oz. It won first up last time in beat uh, Spicy Margs in a half-decent race. Around the eight and nine dollar mark, I'll put on top getting control up the straight. But this is uh, there's other chances here. Pivot City was a complete tragedy last week. They've they've brought it straight back to the races. Gets an outside gate. I think it's a live chance. Uh, and there's plenty of others. I wouldn't actually knock anyone here for tipping anything. Uh, Atlantic Spirit next best. Who have you found? I went for the Resumer here in Carbonados oh, as well. You're a smart man, because, um, you're right. It's. One first up last prep um, after a very long spell, uh, 200 odd days, uh, in an open class race, won pretty comfortably there over 1100. Then they put it straight into a group three. Um, it wasn't ran sixth of six, but it was only four lengths off them, and that was a race won by Brave Mead. And then they backed it up in a group two behind Snow Patrol, Patrol um, yeah. only a few lengths off, carrying 58. Um, and let up there and then put it out to spell. So um, I think that's good form line for yeah. something like this. They must have an opinion to take it straight into group three. I, and I group think two company. It, I've got it listed as being lame in that second up run too. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Same, same. So I thought 750 was a really, really good yeah. price. Yeah, um, the jump outs were fantastic. A really good. In a, in a really open race, the main danger I had is number seven, La Parane. So they could run well. Um, Third up here after a couple of nice runs uh, since the spell and lightly raced. Um, good race. It is. This isn't. This could fit into. This could. This could easily be one of those Melbourne Cup Day listed races. So this is a decent race. Um, did you look at Steel City? Uh, I did look at Steel City. I just thought I'd want to see it. Um, run before I got too excited on it. Yeah, same, same, same as me. Um, the eight, A lot of that early tier old stuff just hasn't stood up, has it? There's just no. nothing. No, and there's no real trial form. It's 265 days Yeah, since it's spell. Just um, cop it, if it, cop it yeah. if it wins. Had a couple of trials that didn't really do much in um, late last year. Yeah. So, yeah. No, all good. Uh, 400 meter benchmark 84. Uh, here they all are. They've all our mates are back again. Who's going to win this time? Well, they've all got form between each other. I'm going to go for the last start winner, the Ferrari. Why is it 12 bucks? I know. Yep. Keep going. Sorry. I agree. Too. I mean, first up, third behind Chorton Lane, which I would definitely back in this race. And then Sprouted Wings last start at Sandown and got, got Reinberg. Does go up probably. Couple of kilos, which is why it's twelve bucks. But I think they're all sort of carrying that that type of weight. But I think it's got some improvement, and yeah, I think it can run really well. So uh, for me, it's it's a play at twelve dollars, and we'll give you a good sight. I think it might fight it out with Reinberg again. Um, I think it can run well, so no reason why it can't um, be in the finish. And some of the others that you know, I wouldn't turn you off. They're all going quite. Uh, Quite well, Ellen New, Tal Talbragar, obvious chances. Um, but yeah, that's the way I'm going to go. I agree. I, if you go back and watch both those last two runs, it was nearly the run of the race in both, uh, including winning the last, and it's longer than everything it beat. So I've got it on top. 
in its third up. Most of these are much deeper in their prep. So I agree with everything you've said. Uh, for the sake of it, I'm putting he's our Bonneville as a danger back to Flemington. Probably helps it. Did we near um, track and distance two starts ago? I was a little bit shocked at the price of LAU leader right up in grade, but maybe it's just because it's different, not tied to everyone else. Um, cool. The other one I was interested in, which was... You're going to say Lafarge? Is Co- no, oh, is okay. Cador. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was backed heavily last start it into was. $3 favourite in the race won by the Ferrari, right? And now it's $17. Like, it was its first start um, in Australia. Um, so I wouldn't also let that get under your guard, right? Because... They obviously thought it was a good chance last start backing it in, and that's right. This that was that, and that was a, that was all pre-race. That was a big plunge, hey, wasn't it? Late. That was a massive plunge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come from everywhere, but didn't do much at all. So, again, um, stranger things have happened, particularly busted in Young Stable. Good shout, good shout. I'll um, cover that as well. In addition to the other two, the ninth is a twelve hundred meter benchmark eighty four. Uh, I've just gravitated to Sydney form. Mars Mission drops, ran around with 60 plus, I think it was 60 odd kilos last time out at Kenzo, ran well. Uh, 63, in fact. Drops down to 56 here uh, and fits this race well in a you know standard Melbourne race. Uh, it's 15 bucks. I'll put it on top from Legio 10, who will improve off that first up run. Absolutely flies. All its best form is in Melbourne. So getting back there helps. And then I'd spent too much time looking at British Columbia. Um, resuming over 1,200 metres I thought was a bit interesting. But I w- another one, I would actually not knock any race, anyone finding anything in this race yet. Uh, who have you come up with? No, I've stuck with the favourite. Yeah, okay. There's some wins more um, flying at the moment. And that was a yep. great win last start. Just sat back in the field, uh, extended and went, thanks for coming. Um and prior to that, its form was pretty good in Adelaide. So I think it's got a bit of ability and uh, I think it can go on with it here. So I've got it on top and um, the one to beat. Perfect. Uh, give us your quaddy. The quaddy. I reckon if we can get this, we'll be going all right. We will. Um, in no particular order, I'm going number 10, political debates. Number seven, Bill Toro. Number two, Virtuous Circle. Number one, Milford. And I'll go number five, Let's Roll the Dice. Cool. In the second leg, race seven, I'm going to go number 13, Marble Nine. Number six, Carbonados. Number eight, Bossy Nick. Number seven, La Parane. And number 20, Sue Spirit. Race eight, which is the third leg, I'm going to go number 10, Tal Brigar, number six, Reinberg, number eight, Le Ferrari, number 17, Cordor, and number three, He's Our Bonneville. And to finish the day, I'm going to go number 17, Lose Some, Win More, number nine, Legio 10, number 12, Mars Mission, Number 16, Disneck, and number five, our last cash. Beauty. Your best in value. My best is, uh, now I've got to go back and find it. Race four, number three, Quantum Cat. And I think there's plenty of value around. Um, So what am I going to have? I'm going to have race seven, number six, Carbonados. Beautiful. I, I really like Carbonados too, so... Give it strength. My best is race one, number one, the blue colours, Pisces, and my value, race eight, number eight, La Ferrari. Definitely a race, a card, as we said, to cover a couple in some of those deeper races there. Uh, of that Sydney card we mentioned, could you find anything to talk about? Not a lot to talk about. I, there was a few that I thought was worth specking at some odds. Uh, race four, number 16, piggyback, around $7. I think you can back it each way and get a sight. Keen on race six, number 13, the Black Cloud. I think that's a, a horse with uh, plenty of potential and plenty of upside. Um, 
And I think race 10, number three, Waterford, I think uh, should be getting their chockies. Yeah, Waterford was the only one at this stage I could uh, even mention. Uh, and I didn't have any Adelaide. So, and Kembla's washed out. Uh, so I hope everyone's staying uh, dry over the last 48 hours in, or 24 hours in Sydney. Uh, and those in Sydney enjoy the long weekend. Some great betting ahead. Look forward to getting stuck into this on Saturday afternoon. Uh, take care, guys. We'll be back to do it all again next week. See ya.